Hi, I'm Lisa Wisner, the host of Power Up Hero. Power Up Hero is a podcast all about living a powered up life. Because let's face it, living your best life and juggling a busy workload, that can be close to impossible. I found hundreds and hundreds of power up life hacks and systems that will help you automate your life and be time smart. So instead of spending your time, you're using it to actualize your potential. And I'm so excited for you to join me on my podcast, Power Up Hero, so you can power up your life to live to your fullest potential. Hi, I'm Lisa Wisner, the host of the Power Up Hero Show, a show all about you. Yes, you being the hero of your story. We share stories and we share entertainment about how others are being heroes in their lives. We believe that this world is filled up with people who are pulling unimaginable superpowers to make it all come together. And we want to share these stories for you, not only to empower you, but also to encourage you to be a hero in your life and also see how you can take the impossible and make it possible by pulling on your own God-given superpowers. Our world needs more heroes today, more than ever before. And today, I am so excited that we're going to be shedding a spotlight on an important individual in our community. Today, we have Candace. Candace Fricky, and Candace is a school administrator, but mostly known as a mental health hero in our community. In fact, I know Candace because my husband is the one who recommended Candace to me. In fact, I was talking to my husband about mental health, and we were talking about how COVID, you know, is really affecting everyone. And the story I was telling him, he was sharing with me how one of his coworkers, Candace, because he works for the school district as well, has been sharing a lot about how mental health is really the key differentiator in the success, not only for our children in our schools, but also in the community in general. So I want to share with you a few statistics of why today's conversation is important. You know, mental health is really one of those things that we can say maybe has a stigma, but uh, mostly with our youth, right? It's really important to understand that as much as we say kids are resilient, they can overcome. But it's important to know that the statistics are very clear that 50% of all conditions for mental health actually begin with children as young as 14. And 70%, 75% on all mental health issues with youth start at the age of 24. And I can go on and on talking about this, but I really also wanted to shed a spotlight on the fact that, you know, during this pandemic, I found a lot of information that just traced back to how important it has been to have mental health heroes in our communities. And so today we are celebrating and we are are really shedding a spotlight on all of y'all mental heroes, out, mental health heroes out there. So if you are a counselor, if you know a counselor, if you know somebody who is working on helping all of us with our mental health, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to you. But also we want to congratulate you for the tireless work that you're doing for all of us as individuals, for our families and for our communities. And so we are shedding a spotlight on Candace Fricky. Candace is a licensed therapist, and Candace is also many other things. I want to point out that Can- Candace is also a life coach, a realtor, an educator, and an author. Candace has a passion for mental health and believes that educating people about the importance of mental health wellness is the key to helping others achieve their full potential. Candace was born and raised in Texas and is the daughter of a psychologist and a teacher. So education and mental health run deep in her soul. Candace graduated with a bachelor's degree in elementary education from Texas Christian University, along with a master's degree in counseling from Texas and University Corpus Christi, Go Islanders! And Candace has been an elementary school teacher and a counselor, an adjunct professor and in psychology and counselor at Del Mar College and is currently a school administrator. And Candace also has a private practice where she specializes in anxiety, couples counseling, and recovering from trauma, grief, and loss. Candace has two grown children and loves her dogs and cats. Candace enjoys the beach, reading, cooking, and traveling. She believes that having a positive attitude and actively seeking positive experiences, maintaining a self-care routine, and having close family and friends is her key to maintaining a life that brings her joy. So with all of that, I hope you will all join me in welcoming our Power Up Hero of Mental Health, Candace Fricky. Welcome, welcome, Candace. Hey, thank you so much, Lisa, for that wonderful introduction. I am so excited to be here today and share the message about mental health wellness and just trying to help anybody out there that's struggling. 
Well, we are super excited to have you here. I know we were trying to get you on the show for a while. And so thank you so much for carving some time from your calendar to be here. First, we want to congratulate you on being recognized as a hero in our community. As soon as, you know, it's like almost like, you know, that thing where you see something and then you see it everywhere. As soon as my husband mentioned your name, it's like I started to see you everywhere. I started to hear about you. And so I have to say here in our community, not only are you a, a, a light, right, but also you're doing impactful work. So you don't, you're not only doing great work, you are impacting our community. So thank you so much and congratulations on being our power up hero of mental health. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and get started right into the interview. We want to ask you just to tell us a little bit about yourself. Of course, we now know you're born and raised here in Texas. You come from a family of education, psychology. So tell us a little bit more um, about yourself and how you grew up. Well, my, as, as you know, my dad was a psychologist and my mom was a teacher. And so we always talked about feelings in our family. You know, we would sit around the dinner table talking about how our day went. And um, during when I was a child, my dad was working on his doctorate in psychology. And so I would see him, you know, working on his dissertation, reading books. And so that just was normal to me, you know, because that's what I saw every day. And um, we were a very close family. Um, just I had a lot of fun growing up. I feel very blessed, um, you know, to have had the type of childhood and upbringing that I had. And I think that it uh, has encouraged me to try to help others to change the way they think so they change how they feel and they can create a life that they love, you know, because not everybody was brought up in the same environment that I was and, and don't have the skills, but it's out there for everyone to access. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to connect with people and, and let them teach you and show you that there are different ways to create your life. And there's so many heroes out there. You know, I'm just honored to be here today to spread my message. Yeah, thanks. Oh my gosh. So obviously you have a great, I guess, foundational uh, upbringing, right? In terms of understanding what it's like to be in this space. But while I was reading your bio, we talked about all of these other passions that you have. So you're sort of like a multidisciplinary serial careerist. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it goes back to my love of learning. Um, you know, that I saw modeled by my parents, you know, um, one of the rewards that my sister and I got growing up was my parents would take us to the bookstore and buy us a book. And I can remember my dad saying, you know, you can, you can go and pick out a book that you want. And I would come to the counter with a stack of books and he would have to say, well, you know, we can only do one book. <laughs> so I would have to look through my books and I would pick one, you know, and I remember being disappointed that I just had to pick one. And, um, you know, I would stay up late at night reading and they would come and knock on my bedroom door. You need to turn your lights out. You know, it's time to go to bed. And then I can remember sneaking <laughs> with a flashlight to read under the covers. Yeah. Because books were so important to me. And, you know, reading a variety of books, depending on the age and stage of my life and my interests. Um, but the reason I, I keep doing all these different things is I'll find a passion and I'll start to learn about it, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes as I learn about it, I find that I'm not as interested as I thought that I was. Um, but sometimes it sparks something else and I just keep going and going, you know, and trying to just be the best person that I can be. And, and I believe that education changes lives. And so, you know, I constantly want to be growing. I never want to be the kind of person that just says, you know, all the things I've learned in my life. I want to say all the things I'm learning in my life and be in that present tense and be present in the moment. I love that. Wow. That was a drop the drop the mic moment right there. That's totally quotable. I think I can totally see what, where you're going with this. You know, it's almost like you, 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 I guess, and put yourself into everything that you're doing, right? So if you're learning, you immerse yourself fully into it, where it even turns into an educational moment for other people. And now here you are, licensed therapist, educator, teacher, you know, you're now, uh, you know, real estate. So you wanted to learn about real estate. So now here you are helping other people make their real estate dreams come true. Yeah. So it, it just, one thing leads to another. And I yeah. found that in my life, when I open myself up to opportunities, typically, you know, I think I'm going down a certain pathway and then I'll meet somebody and it goes in a different pathway. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it stays on the straight pathway, 
But, you know, that's what I want to get across to people is if you have a passion or an interest in something, go out, explore it, talk to the experts. Um, you know, the college pathway was my pathway, but it may not be for everybody and that's okay. But find what your passion is, become truly educated in that. You know, there are so many different things in life that people can hold on to and, and love and be passionate about and share that. We need so many different kinds of people. I just happen to fall in love with the world of education and mental health. But, you know, we just look around us. There's so many amazing things. There is. And so let me now touch on your education. So you went to Texas Christian University for your bachelor's degree. And then did you simultaneously uh, get a job at, in elementary education and then work on your master's? Or how did you make that decision? So, so what I did, I graduated um, with a bachelor's in elementary education. I taught kindergarten um, the first, I graduated in December. So the first semester out, I taught kindergarten. And it, it was it was tough, you know, because I'd never taught and there were all these kindergartners running around. And, <laughs> you know, it was a, it was a fun experience, but but tough, you know, anything new sometimes can be tough. But then the second year I taught school, I taught English as a second language. And that was an amazing experience for me. I hope it was for my students. But, you know, I had kids from all over the world. This was in the Dallas Independent School District. And I had kids from. Uh, Venezuela, from Poland, from Thailand, from Vietnam, from Mexico, um, El Salvador. And it was just wonderful to hear about all their different experiences and their culture and get to know their families and then, you know, start to teach them English. Um, I also taught adult basic education for second language learners and citizenship classes. And so that was really fun because I just got a glimpse into a world that I may not have known had that opportunity not opened up for me. And um, so after a couple of years, then I went back and I got my master's degree in counseling because I found that I would end up talking to my students about their stories. And so I wanted to do more. And I thought, you know, I really probably need to be a counselor so they can come to my office and we can explore all of these different things that they're thinking and feeling. And that's kind of how it, how the counseling pathway started. Plus, you know, I grew up playing with my dad's Stanford Binet kits and his testing kits and, you know, hearing him with his stories of, of the world of psychology. And that just is my passion and my soul. That sounds fantastic. You know, and I always like to say sometimes we have to pay attention to our childhood. It, it's sort of like, I don't want to say we repeat, you know, from our childhood, but your childhood is kind of telling on how your your, your uh, attractions are in terms of what you lean into, right? So here you are, you went for elementary education, and now you're pushed into counseling just by the forces, right? You got your degree from Texas A&M. Go Islanders. Thank you, Islanders. I know, we're both graduating from there. And so now let's talk through, um, in terms of you, us calling you the mental health hero, right? So when we talk, when we're talking about mental health, I hear about mental health first aid, which is like regular first aid, but you know, we all learn how to provide first aid for other people. And then we have professionals, licensed therapists who provide mental health support. I, the word mental health itself has become like a social, I guess you could say tag word, a buzzword, right? So like now everyone's tagging everything, mental health, my mental health day, you know? So tell me, what is your definition of mental health? What does that mean to you? It's about number one, engaging in self-care, because if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be in the best mindset to do anything in your life, to parent your children to um, be the best worker you can be, coworker, family member, spouse. You know, it, it just is so all encompassing. You've got to look out for yourself and practice that self care. But mental health wellness means living your best life. You know, what, what is important to you? What are your values? What brings you joy? How do you impact others? Um, you know, and then being, being okay with saying, you know, not really having a great mental health day. You know, and I've told people that it's OK to not be OK. And when you notice that you're having days where you're not OK, reach out. There are 24 seven hotlines out there. There are therapists, school counselors, school social workers, uh, any caring adult. You know, it can be anybody out there for our children um, teachers. 
uh, custodians, bus drivers, you know, everybody just connect with some human and talk to them and let them know what you're thinking and feeling. Mental health wellness is so important and talking about mental health in the past has been a stigma. And so while I know the pandemic has been so taxing on so many, um, it has brought mental health into the spotlight. And, and I think that's the good thing. You know, I try to look for the positive in situations and that's what I've discovered with mental health is um, the pandemic now, like you said, it's hashtag mental health, hashtag mental health wellness, um, you know, hashtag social and emotional. But I think that's great because now people are really being more okay with saying, you know, I'm feeling kind of sad today or I'm not really having a great day. And then reaching out to family and friends or therapists and figuring out, figuring out a way to change that situation. Oh, I love it. You know, and I think uh, when you were when you were explaining mental health, I kept thinking of all the people who touched my life and how they may not be licensed therapists, but they give me mental health, right? In terms of either listening or you know whatever it is, right? They give me a smile on my face, and so we can all see mental health as just self care, right? About how do we care not only I guess for ourselves but for others. I want to bring in a few people who are watching and have uh, posted something. So um, Cameron Tooth, who is Toth, I apologize, is uh, one of my friends and actually has been here uh, as a power up hero. Talks about mental health and physical health comes up over and over again in discussions regarding success. And I completely agree. I think that. Um, you know, when we when we talk about anybody having any sort of success, it's about resilience and it's about, um, you know, taking care of yourself. And so this is it. Right. Uh, we don't want to burn out. So thank you, Cameron. And I also want to point out that you definitely are inspiring uh, people who are pursuing careers in counseling. Right. And I think it's important when we are sharing stories of how people have gotten there. Right. Um, it's through education, right? We all have to learn the foundational principles of the work we want to do before we're able to make it our own. And I think what you've been able to do is uh, essentially take your interests in learning and and make that your own, right? So you have all these places to pull from. And we have a fan who's from Ontario, Canada. Welcome. How's it going? Hey, welcome. Susan? Nice to see you, Susan. And so super, super excited to have you all watching. If you have any questions at all for Candice, please put them in the comments so that we can be able to unpack them right here live for you. And so now, now, uh, Candice, we are actually calling you a power up hero. So we want to find out from you, what does a hero mean to you? Well, first, I'm very humbled by that. You know, um, a hero is someone that impacts the lives of others. And I have been given a wonderful career where I am able to impact others. You know, I'm always so honored when someone tells me, oh my gosh, you, you touched my life or you, you know, coming to you changed my life. And I know that mental health is so important because I hear it from people that knew my father. My father has passed, he passed in 97, but he was the head of mental health at Del Mar College for a number of years. And I will have some people my age now, you know, in their fifties, coming up to me that will say, oh my gosh, your dad was my professor in the mental health program. And now I'm a licensed chemical dependency counselor. You know, and when I think about that, I think about this person learned from my father and now they are working with people that struggle with addiction and changing their lives. So it's just like that domino effect. It goes on and on and on, um, you know, and when I have clients that tell me, you know, you, you saved me, you know, I was going down a pathway where I thought I wanted to kill myself and coming in for therapy really helped me to put different things in my life in perspective, learn some stress management skills, learn ways to self-regulate or to learn some positive psychology skills. And so, you know, I just, I, I'm so blessed, you know, every day, I mean, yes, I have bad days like everybody. You know, there's some days where I'm like, I'd really like to stay in bed snuggling with my dogs, you know. But um, most of the time I wake up and I'm like, all right, I know today is going to be a tough day in the mental health world. But if I can just make a difference with one person, then my day is complete. You know, I feel like we're here to serve others. And, um, you know, my faith 
is very important to me. And so I feel like that's why I'm here. You know, that's why I'm on your show is to, you know, maybe spark mental health in someone, um, you know, a, a passion for it or have them be able to connect with a therapist in the community. Um, there's, it's just so impactful to talk about things in your life and connect with other people because no one has a perfect life. You know, I've had my share of things that have gone wrong and, you know, a lot of, you know, grief and loss and, and things, you know, where I was like, oh, that really wasn't the best decision, you know, but hopefully you learn from it and you start to think about how can I make different decisions in the future? How can I change my life? Um, or maybe this isn't the right pathway for me. Sometimes we think we're going on a pathway and that's not really the best pathway for us. It may be for our best friend, but not for us. I love it. And, you know, you're, you're really reminding me of, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? There's a show that's on Netflix right now, I think. It's about Bob Ross. Have you seen it by any chance? I have not. But you know who Bob Ross is, right? Uh, the, no. painter, the, no. the PBS painter, the guy who paints, like, he teaches how, he teaches you how to paint in, like, 30 minutes. Anyway, well, Bob I should Ross, watch that show. My grandmother was an artist, and my great-grandmother was an art teacher, and I don't think I have any art skills, but maybe yeah. I do. I'll watch Bob Ross. Yeah, go watch Bob Ross. So I I don't think I've ever watched a full episode of Bob Ross, but I know Bob Ross exists on this planet, and so just trying to find out something to watch, right? So I picked up this documentary that's just come out, and I think what, what you're trying to paint a picture here of is the fact that everybody – everybody can make an impact on, on anyone, right? So even if you're going to go into the day and you're like, you know, I'm just going to get through it today, having that positive attitude in terms of one person may see you getting through the struggle that they know you're going through and see that as a catalyst to them moving forward within their lives, right? We don't know what everyone's going through. And so um, I like how you connected the dots there, right? So I believe like being a mental health hero in this regard is you showing up for yourself and then showing up strongly as a hero. And it almost creates this, this ripple effect on the world. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. All right. So now I want to move into your superpowers because we always believe that our hero always pulls a superpower, some unimaginable superpowers, right? So as the power up hero of mental health, what would you say your superpowers are? What superpowers do you pull so that you can become that hero? I think hope and love of learning, you know, together, it. those two things, I think will get you anywhere. Um, you know, learning to cook, you know, it doesn't have to be something that's going to change the world, but, you know, learning how to cook a certain meal can bring me joy. Um, that that's important. You know, I have hope that, you know, my message and the message of many other counselors and social workers and therapists and mental health people will get out there to those that are struggling. And, you know, those people that are struggling will say, OK, hey, I, I heard this pe person speak about mental health. You know, maybe I need to go talk to somebody because it really is OK to talk about how you feel. You know, it, that, that's it's, what the human, I, it's the human experience, isn't it? Like, I th and I think we forget that we're human beings. I can't remember who said this, but somebody really super smart said this, not me. So we're human beings, not human doings. And we get so stuck on the doing and the showing up and we forget that we are beings with feelings. Yeah, we're all living through this pandemic. Everybody has a different pandemic experience. And so, um, you know, I've heard it said, I don't remember who said it, but I was listening to a webinar or watching something and they were talking about, we're all in the same storm, but we're on different boats. And so, you know, when we think about that, some people are on a luxury ocean liner cruising through the pandemic. Um, other people are on a 26 offshore, 26 foot offshore boat, and they started out on calm seas, and now they're at six to eight foot seas and kind of struggling, getting a little seasick out there. Other people may be in a canoe that has capsized and they're hanging on for dear life, you know, and that's okay. We all have different experiences, but the way to, you know, help ourselves get through this is to reach out to other people and make those connections you know, talk to people and, and just, you know, share your experience. It's so important. Oh my gosh. You just painted a picture of clarity on the ocean of our lives, right? Oh my gosh. Everybody is on a different boat. I love that, Candace. Yeah, we are. And, and it's okay to be on a different boat, you know, because yeah. 
that's just how our lives are. But when you see someone's boat is sinking, you know, I think we have an obligation to our fellow human beings to go over and say, Hey, you want to get on my boat for a while? Let me help you. You know? Yes. You want to get on my, like today I'm on a luxury liner. You can tell I'm on the, I'm on, I'm on the Disney cruise, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and that's that's how it's going to be. You know, and, and I think that's important to get across to people is you're going to have ups and downs and, and it's okay to not be okay. You know, I've had clients come into my private office for therapy and they've said, you know, I, I want a life like yours. And I'm like, tell me a little bit more about that. What does that mean to you? And their initial vision of my life is that things have just been perfect and have flowed and and been great. And I'll tell them, you know, no, my life is not perfect. I have had my share of negative experiences and difficult experiences and challenges, the same as any person. But I took a deep breath and I thought, okay, I don't want my life to be like this anymore. So what am I going to do to fix it? And it's baby steps. You know, it doesn't change just because you change your mindset, you know, overnight. It's a process to get there, you know, and I I look at other people out there that are motivational speakers and have, you know, great businesses and it didn't happen overnight. They have a vision and they work super hard to get there. You know, those are my heroes, you know, because I want to be that person that impacts people on a global scale, you know, Um, but right now, hey, I'm doing it locally. and, And even if it's just, you know, a friend, I'm happy with that impact because that's one person that maybe learn something from me. Well, we also have Susan from Canada. So now you are international, I guess you could say, in the <laughs> Americas. So if we have anybody watching in any of the other continents, please let us know you're watching. So that, yeah, yeah, that's, we, that's really cool. International. Yeah, well, our show is definitely international. We have an audience in Australia and we have a growing audience in Africa, a very, very strong audience there. So. Candice, you are officially international now. Your message has crossed the borders. <laughs> That's a, that is amazing. Mental health, people. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so now I want to play a little game that we call Fast Five Finger Favorites, and we're going to ask you what your favorites are. Now, for those of y'all who are watching the show right now, we invite you to be part of this as well as we unpack Candace's favorites. We want you to share your favorites as well. So, Candace, we're going to be asking you five questions, and we want you to answer super fast. You ready? All right, what is your favorite book? The Notebook. Oh, that's a good book. Oh, <laughs> Love that book. And, and recently I'm, I'm reading um, the, the Body Keeps the Score because it's about trauma. So that goes along with my mental health. But Okay. The Body Keeps the Score. You know what? Oh, just even that quote, that's a phrase, right? It <laughs> to is. put up that's somewhere, it. your body keeps the score. So you, you could be telling yourself you're working out and doing good for yourself, but your body is telling, right? What is your favorite movie? Father of the Bride. The old Spencer Tracy one. Yes. Uh, Taylor, yeah, back in the day. I love old movies. I love that movie. Oh, my gosh. I remember that movie so clearly. And when I think of that movie, I think of my little sister because her and I loved that movie. Love that movie so much. So uh, you just brought my little sister into this. Annie, how's it going, Annie, if you're watching? Now we're going to ask you, what's your favorite song or something to listen to? Anything from the 80s, um, but right now I really like Parker McCollum's Hell of a Year. Oh, <laughs> I feel like that's what we that. listen to. <laughs> okay, Hell of a Year. Yeah. And then what is your favorite quote or phrase to say? Okay, now this has a story behind it. So okay. my favorite quote is something that my father used to say. And um, my father died at 57 of a massive heart attack. And so he would always say, don't spend one second, one minute, one hour doing something that you don't truly love to do. And so the last day of his life, he was out fishing on his boat with my mom and a couple of my college friends were out with him. I couldn't go because I had a six month old baby at the time. And so my dad gets off his boat here in uh, Port Aransas at Isla Moorings, and he's carrying his fishing pole in one hand and was holding my mom's hand with his other, and he had a massive heart attack and died right then and there. And, um, you know, they tried to revive him, of course, after having the heart attack. But, you know, when I think about it, I mean, it was 
horrific losing him so suddenly at that age and, you know, um, just a, a really traumatic experience for me. But if he had to go, I know that's the way he would have probably created in his mind, you know, spending the day with my mom. I mean, they met when they were 14 and, you know, she's since remarried and has a wonderful husband and they're, they're very happy. She calls it chapter one and chapter two of her life. But, um, that, that's my quote. Don't, don't spend one second, one minute, one hour doing something that you don't really love to do. And, you know, I love mental health and that's why I'm doing this. Oh my gosh. Um, Susan shares that, um, sorry to hear about this, Candice. I'm sorry to hear about your father's passing. You know, in fact, you were speaking so candidly about your father that I was like, I was like, can we meet your dad? You know, <laughs> I wish we could. He passed in 1997. Okay. You know, so it's been a really long time. But like I said earlier, I'm still hearing from people maybe that he saw as a, a psychologist or that he taught at Del Mar College. And I hear that impact that he had on all their lives. So that's what keeps me going too, to know that what I'm doing now might impact somebody. And then that just goes on and on and on. It does. And I want to bring in my friend Cameron Toth, who says, very difficult to place a value on someone that teaches you how to think clearer and be more organized, priceless. Perspective, experience, and tactical skills for managing life are in invaluable. Yeah, I love that. you're so right. Yeah, I love that. Oh, that was definitely not a fast five finger favorite. No, but, but it's something I had to share with people. And it was so good. It's it was exactly the point of this show, right? And I think what we always try to uncover here is what is the depth of our hero? And I think I can just already tell that we, your, your dad was a hero in our community. And the fact that he was a teacher means that there's a piece of him in every single student that yeah. um, that he touched, you know, from Del Mar College, I guess you could say. Yes, absolutely. And so just to wrap up our fast five finger favorites, I want to ask you as our power up hero of mental health, we already unpacked that your superpowers are, you said hope and learning, right? Hope and learning. Yes. So we want to ask you, how do you wake up in the morning? How do you throw those covers off? If you had to have the perfect day, how would you wake up to power up? Oh, well, when I wake up in the morning, I take the covers off of me and the dogs because they sleep under the covers with me. But, um, you know, we, we get up and I say, good morning, dogs. And, you know, they wag their tails and go on outside to do their business. And I typically get a cup of coffee and, you know, I look outside and I always check on the sky, you know, because there are brilliant colors in the sky. And then, you know, I turn on the local news because I like to kind of set the tone for the day and hear what's going on and take my shower and get ready. But I always talk to my mom while I'm driving to work. Um, you know, and I, I live over in Portland, Texas. So as I drive to Corpus, I get to see the bay and the sun rising and, you know, the ocean and the beach are my passions and connect me. But, you know, I love visiting with my mom every day because I know at some point in time, you know, she's not going to be there because as much as we love our people, they can't live forever. So I really cherish the moments of getting to talk to her every morning. It's, it's just great. And then I get to my office and I love to get there really early. You know, I like to get there about seven in the morning because it's quiet and I can kind of put my um, put my thoughts together before I start my day and make sure I'm my best self. So as I listen to other people and try to help them through any struggles in the day that I've already connected with myself first thing in the morning and, you know, I take a deep breath and do my breath in and my breath out and just, you know, get ready. But that that's typically my morning routine. And on the weekends, it's pretty much the same, you know, um, maybe go sit outside in the morning and have a little bit of time with the dogs and coffee. I, I really like to do that. Um, doesn't, doesn't happen on the weekdays, but the weekends I can get to that. Yeah. It sounds like you, there's some very lucky dogs there. <laughs> <laughs> I love my dogs. Yeah. It very much sounds like it. All right. So now I just kind of want to touch a little bit on the work that you do here for us in the city of Corpus Christi. So um, let's just kind of paint a picture of your professional life when you say that you're going into the office as a school administrator helping with counseling. So you know, essentially, like, what are you doing? Because you're not assigned to a school. You're supporting the whole entire district in terms of counseling. 
Right, right. I'm the coordinator for our comprehensive school counseling program in the Corpus ISD. And so I help support the work of our school counselors and our school social workers. And, and those are things like, you know, reaching out to kids and offering individual counseling, small group counseling. Um, our counselors go and do classroom guidance. They offer a lot of, um, you know, mental health services to our kids. And then they offer just those basic skills, you know, of learning how to make friends. Um, and, and they talk to kids about their struggles that they might have. The high school counselors will help students, um, you know, plan their post-secondary goals and strategies, you know. Um, so we do a lot of different things. And, and sometimes, you know, I help the counselors or the social workers with different situations they may have with the student. And we talk it through. We do, you know, case conference to figure out how we can best help the student and or their families. We make mm -hmm. referrals to community agencies for services that are beyond the scope of the school counselor or the school social worker. And so I'm very blessed to do that. And I have a great team of people because it's a big job. And so I have, you know, all the counselors and all the social workers that really help us as a group to do great things for the community. It's yeah. not <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, I feel like the investment that the school district makes in having people like you and your team involved in their lives. Right. Because we live our lives every day. So even though the, we say oh, we put we take our kids to school, then we're part of the school. And so that whole life is being led. There's no such thing as a separation of, OK, school life, work life, home life. Right. It's all integrated. And so it it's great to have. Um, I guess what you're saying is you figure out where all the resources are needed, uh, no matter what. Right. Right. And it, it does. It takes a village, you know, because we have great community resources in, in Corpus. And so it's about connecting the families to these resources, because the people that work in the community are also passionate about whatever their service is, you know, whether it be um, helping the homeless, whether it be, um, you know, a counseling service within the community, uh, you know, but our job is to, to help families get what they need. Yes. You know, and help them to, to do better and to be, you know, to help kids get in the right mindset to learn. Because if they're going through a lot of trauma, grief and loss, they have a lot going on in their mind, you're not going to be in the best mindset to learn that day. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, part of what I want to do is get the message out there. I don't want people to think that, you know, counselors and social workers hang out in their offices. I want kids to know if you need to talk to somebody, Go talk to these people, you know, go to your school counselor and, you know, get them to help you. That That's what we're here for. You know, the teachers, everybody, you know, yeah. people go into education because they have a passion for it and they want to help kids in whatever their capacity is. And so I just I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out. That's that's the main message. Connect, reach mm -hmm. out. So like, yeah, and you know what you what your message is, is so clear, because while I was doing just a little bit of research on you, um, you know, you start to find all these statistics and having boys myself who are in school and hearing like one in six kids have mental health conditions like anxiety or depression. Like I'm just thinking about my kids, you know, and trying to think, OK, one in six kids in the classroom. Right. So right. it's one of them, my kid. And then clearly I understand now how important it is to have early treatment, maybe some support and so everything you're saying just speaks volumes for me because i think the work that you're doing is helping all of us right so not only our kids be successful in school because like you said they cannot learn if they are not the first need is not meant met right that mental health is not met but also being able to achieve their life goals right so I, I guess we can also say even though we deal with anxiety and depression and and anything else the counselors are also there for those aspirational goals, right? To be a support system absolutely. We talk about them getting higher education and there's somebody there to guide them. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, t letting kids know what types of careers are, are, are out there, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes we get in that mindset that there's only like five different types of careers, you know, teacher, yeah. nurse, doctor, firefighter, police officer, you know, but, but saying, you know, you can be, um, you know, a, a computer specialist, or you can be um, a graphic designer, you know, because if you don't grow up in that home, you may not even think beyond that. And so yeah. that's, you know, the importance of college and career readiness and, and talking about those things. And, you know, we need parents to, to ask questions too. you know, advocate and be, 
be there for your child to to ask the questions because mm -hmm. if we don't know what questions are out there, how can we provide support? Mm -hmm. And then that provides that hope you were talking about, right? I guess when I think about, oh, you know, when, when you're distressed, it's seeing that vision of, you know, it's going to get better because I know that there's something else out there or I know there's a better thing out there or I am working towards this better thing. So it's giving that hope that, that you use as a superpower. Absolutely. Love it. Love it so much. Okay. So we're almost wrapping the show. We don't want to take up too much of your time, even though I could be talking to you forever. <laughs> I know that I could go on about this all day long. Yeah. It seems like positive. it. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, so if we are living through your life, so if I was like a movie director and I made the movie of your life, right? As the, the power of hero of mental health, right? So how would we see you living your life? In fact, the question I am going to ask you is, you know, we talk about heroes being um, people who use their time wisely. So that's one thing that we are, we are very, um, we think about the fact that, you know, life is fleeting. So as a hero, how are you maximizing your impact, maximizing your potential? So do you have any tips or tricks or life hacks on how a hero lives their life? Sure. Um, I try to be very intentional about every day. So, um, you know, when I look at the number of tasks I have to do at work, I try to prioritize, you know, what is the most important for that day? And then I just work my way through those. Um, everything goes on my calendar, you know, and even my self-care time goes on my calendar because I love my work so much that I could very easily do it until midnight or one o'clock in the morning. And that's not healthy. You know, even though you love it, it's not the best thing to do. So I schedule time to, you know, go on a walk. I schedule time to watch one of my little exercise videos at my house. I schedule time to go hang out with my family and friends. And so for me, um, having a schedule is really important. Um, I, I like that. I like where everything has its little place on my schedule. Um, I like to be um, organized with the things that I do. And um, that, that makes me feel settled. Mm -hmm. I like that. So if you want to have good mental health and be a mental health hero in your life, get organized, right? And I guess plug in the time. Make appointments with yourself, yeah. it sounds like, right? Exactly. Make appointments in there. Don't leave it to chance. Right. And, and you know, a lot of times when I have um, people come in or I talk to people and I'll ask them, well, what is your self-care routine? they look at me, you know, with these wide eyes, like, well, I don't know, I don't have a self care routine. And I'm like, you know, you're worth at least 15 minutes a day, if not more, you know, so what do you do for 15 minutes, just give me 15 minutes every day, that's all about you. And it could be taking a bubble bath, it could be reading a book, it could be sitting outside and staring into space, listening to music, um, you know, but you've got to take a time out for yourself. You know, and so one of the things I've started doing with people recently is I've been asking them to create a playlist, create one hour of music that is important to you, that motivates you, um, because we're dealing with so much in life that sometimes just listening to your favorite music will reset your whole body and mind. And, you know, taking a deep breath. I can't tell you how many times I start off a presentation and I'll tell everybody, all right, close your eyes. You can take a relaxing breath in, tension, stress out, relaxing breath in, tension, stress out, and then open your eyes. And when you do that, you just feel like you've, you know, come down a bit. And so I'll tell people, practice that throughout the day. Set your alarm if you need to, you know, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., noon, um, you know, because that is that self-care time just to take a moment and be in the present because we can't keep going at this insane pace all the time. Mm -hmm. You've got to take a time out or you're going to burn out. Oh, I love it. You're all about these quotable, like, <laughs> it's like, wow. I mean, it sounds like you've written a book. I know you've written a book and we'll unpack that in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so, I wrote a chapter in a book, you know. Yeah, I can't wait to tell people about it. But I have to share this with you. So one of my coaches taught me about the thousand second break, right? So every thousand seconds, your watch just goes off and like gives you a mental break. And actually, the way I do it is during, so like a, 
thousand seconds is like 16 minutes and, and 40 seconds. So every about 15 minutes, I think about what I'm grateful for, right? So just one thing, like just so that kind of gives me this little reminder to take a deep breath and breathe. It could, if I'm in a meeting, nobody even notices it. I just do it mentally. Absolutely. So I want to ask you, right? Tell me about a few things that you're grateful for, because I just like hearing, you know, what brings people peace? Well, family and friends, of course, you know, I'm so grateful to have supportive family and supportive friends. You know, one of my best friends is a psychologist. And so we have a lot of fun talking together, um, you know, but also I'm very, very grateful that I have a career that is my passion. You know, I don't dread going to work because I'm like, oh, I get to have the chance to make a difference in someone's life today, you know, and that's exciting. And so, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm very grateful for so much. It's hard often to narrow it down, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I, I'm just, I'm grateful for the people that I meet along the way too, you know, because sometimes I've talked to somebody and they open my eyes to a different perspective, something that I didn't even think about, or I didn't have an experience with. And then I start thinking, oh, well, that's really a cool way of looking at that or wow, I didn't know that they were going through this. It helps me to be more sensitive to other people and their situations because I met somebody, you know, and maybe help with a solution to that. I don't know, but I'm just, you know, I'm so happy and so grateful. I'm, I'm so blessed in life. I love it. Um, and I, I have to tell you, there's a lot of people and Susan seems to have gotten blessings from your uh, interview this morning. And That's so, so um, I think the one for me was actually when you were speaking about your mom, I kept thinking, I do the same thing. What is it about calling moms in the morning? So while I'm dropping off my boys at school, we call her and like, okay, I'm calling show show. And we talk to her all the way to school. And it's like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that you do that too. You know, yeah. I don't know. It just kind of helps me start my day to talk to my yeah. mom. And then, you know, she's older, of course, than I am. And so I ask her sometimes about some of her wisdom, you know, hey, yeah. mom, here, this is what's happening. You know, what do you think in your experience? Um, yes. And so she'll offer some, some words of wisdom or we'll talk through things. And, you know, I just value her opinion. It, it, yeah, so it's it's always like this anchoring person who, <laughs> you know, grateful that they're your mom, but um, it's always nice to do that. And then another blessing is music. I always say the people who bring music into our lives, I mean, just the sound of some of my favorite music just completely changes me, you know, like it's yes. like literally one moment I was like this, put my Spotify on and my headphones and I'm like a completely different person. So it's like, wow. And Lisa, that is a great point. You know, if people are feeling depressed, if they have that playlist, at least an hour of their favorite songs, when you listen to that, you know, I do believe that music has the power to change you. And so different things for different people, yes. you know, but have, have a playlist. Yes. And, you know, can I just share a tidbit here? So I'm very much into frequency work. And so even some of the music you listen to based on the frequency that it's on, it vibrates your cells at a, at a level. So like there's different frequencies that you can tune into that actually do the thing you want to do. You want to be energized, listen to 567 hertz music. You know, there's all the scientific reasons why yes. music makes you feel the way you do. So if you find a song that resonates with you, it means your body is, is positively reacting to the vibrations of that music. So enjoy it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. There's so <laughs> much. The same page. There's so much. And then I want to bring Susan. You should be on the show. Susan brought in your breathing exercise, which, by the way, was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I do want to just give a little, little tidbit here about the fact that, you know, even just learning how to breathe, right? Running how to, how to breathe properly is so important, right? Yes. And that's one of the best mental health wellness tips I can give to people, because, you know, when you think about self-care or you think about mental health wellness, you might think, oh, I have to spend some money to do these things. But you don't. You have your breath right within you. And so by taking those deep breaths, and I usually like to do about five deep breaths, you know, um, you recenter yourself because you cannot be relaxed and anxious at the same time. It's physiologically impossible. So if you practice the breathing daily, you're going to start to learn what your body needs to feel like to be calm. And so you're going to be able to help yourself self-regulate self a lot better. 
Ooh, another nugget. Oh my gosh, Candice. Like you're so so while you're breathing, you teach yourself to know what it feels like to be calm. So yes. that when you need it, you know where to go. You right. Because you know, yeah, if you yeah. don't know what it's gonna feel like to be calm, how do you know that you're gonna get there? Yes. You know, yes. so. you prepare, you prepare for the storm before it comes. <laughs> right. Because I've had people to tell me, you know, I was anxious and I tried my deep breathing and it didn't work. And I'll say, okay, but do you practice it regularly? And a lot of times the answer is no. So my response to them is I want you to practice it every single day, every mm -hmm. morning when you wake up at noon before lunch in the afternoon, when you get home from work and at night before you go to bed every day. Yeah. And then tell me the next time a situation arises, because situations are, are going to arise no matter what we do. Tell me if it, you, you feel better than you have in the past. And yeah. most of the time, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And so in closing, um, we definitely want to share a little bit about um, the book that you have written. So as, as part of your multidisciplinary life that you have, you are an author of a book. And I, I love the title of this book, The One Thing That Changed Everything. And so tell us a little bit about your chapter. And I know we can find this book on Amazon. Tell us more. Yes, yes. Um, this kind of came up spur of the moment. I had a group of friends that were um, writing chapters in the book. And so I met the lead author and I said, hey, if y'all ever do that again, let me know because I want to be part of the book. And she said, well, actually, because of COVID, we're delayed in um, getting our book out. So if you can give me a chapter in the next day or two, <laughs> um, you know, we'll put you in the book. And I was like, awesome. So I went home wrote out my chapter because it's always been one of my bucket list items to write a book. So um, I went home, I wrote it and, and now we're published. You know, that's my, my first stepping stone. I, I plan to write other books, um, you know, but Hey, I've got a chapter and I, that makes me proud, you know? Oh my gosh. And you know, it looks so, first of all, I love how it was, the cover was designed and it's the one thing that changed everything. So, I mean, I cannot wait because it it sounds like these are the insights from you know amazing women. Was it only women in the book, or is, is it only women? Yes, okay. many many different women. And so yes. you know you've got people with all kinds of experiences. And so I hope that that's impactful to somebody because you know they may read my story and say, yeah, that doesn't fit my life. I don't like that. But they might read somebody else's and be like, wow, yes. that person is my hero. And and yes. that's okay. You know, not everybody's going to like me and that's all right. Not everybody likes my message and that's all right. But but yes. those that do come on board and let me help you because that that's what I'm here for. And there we have it. So with that, I want to ask you, how can people get in touch with you? OK, um, they can go on to my website, which is CandiceRickyCounselor.com. Um, you also can send me an email which um, it's Candice at CandiceFreakyCounselor.com or you can um, email me at CandiceSells at gmail.com. And then my um, office line is 361-844-8080. And, um, you know, that's my private practice and life coaching office. So um, I'm just excited. You know, there's so many mental health professionals out there. There's so much help out there, especially with the pandemic. So my message to anyone listening is if you are struggling, don't feel like you're alone. There are people that can help. There are organizations that can help. You know, just reach out, talk to somebody um, because there's always an answer to a problem. You know, it may not be the best answer the first time we talk about it, but it's going to get you on the pathway to creating a life that you truly love. I love it. And so with that, we want to thank you so much for being here with us, Candice. I know you could have been doing anything on a Saturday. So thank you so much for spending your quality time with us. Now, this was amazing. Thank you so much for having me. I greatly appreciate it. This is one of the highlights of my life. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And again, congratulations. You are a hero, our mental health hero. And there's so many tips in this episode. So hopefully everybody watching was taking notes about how to take care not only of their mental health, but also part of the community, being part of the community community of mental health advocates. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 
And there you have it. We got a chance to celebrate an amazing person in our community, Candice Fricky. We're so excited. And then we have some fans who are here. Thank you so much, Susan, for being on the show today. We also have Anita Matthew Ullman. How's it going, Anita? Awesome interview. Very great to have you on the show today. So for those of you who are watching the show and are wondering, how can you get on the show today? We definitely want you to be part of the show. So if you want to find out more, not only about how to get on the show, but also about the power up hero that we just interviewed, you can go to our podcast page, which is www.powerupherow.org. Again, that website is www.powerupherow.org. And if you know somebody who deserves to be featured as a power up hero, please nominate them. But again, if you wanna be on the show, nominate yourself. We wanna hear your story. Wherever you are watching this show, be sure to subscribe. So we're talking about YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, LinkedIn, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Stitcher. I wanna give a quick shout out to Amazon. Thank you so much, Amazon, for featuring the Power Up Hero show on your website, thank you. So if we're on Amazon, that means we're on Alexa. So ask your Alexa to play the Power Up Hero podcast and Alexa will play that. And then I am super excited to let you all know that I just got featured as the verbal diversity, equity and inclusion ambassador. And so I'm super excited to be serving you in that capacity, bringing you all the conversations about diversity, equity and inclusion through verbal. And so be sure to subscribe on the verbal platform for the Power Up Hero uh, Power Up Hero playlists that are related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So anywhere and everywhere that you are listening and watching, please subscribe. We want to hear from you, and we don't want you to miss anything that's going on on the show. We hope that you are educated. We hope you are inspired, and we hope you are encouraged to be a Power Up Hero because our world needs more heroes today more than ever before. I hope you make today a powered up day. Bye.